Hello, I would like to show you the advanced breakpointing techniques available to you from within the IAR Embedded Workbench C-SPY Debug Driver Mechanism. My name is Dwayne Gibson. I am a field applications engineer for IAR Systems. In addition to traditional breakpointing techniques of code and data, we also have the ability to do complex conditional breakpoints as well as log breakpoints. Let's take a look at how these advanced breakpoints could help to facilitate and enhance your debugging experience. On my desk, I have an IAR iJet debug probe connected via a serial wire debug cable to an IAR Academy evaluation board based upon the STM32 F429 microcontroller unit. The iJet debug probe is connected to my Windows PC via a USB 2.0 high-speed connection. I will use this hardware along with the sample program which samples the potentiometer on the evaluation board connected to the microcontroller unit's data converter. What you are seeing now on the screen is the IAR CSPY graphical user interface debug perspective view. In an effort to make viewable the items being displayed within the CSPY debugging perspective and to save a little screen real estate, I've chosen to dock the build, the debug log, the breakpoints, and the timeline visual debugging interface views. As you can see, these debug views can be repositioned or docked or pinned to allow for customization of a user's CSPY debugging views required. Let's take a look at that right now. I also have opened a CSPY live watch window which I will use to show the runtime status of the variable expressions I am using for today's demonstration of advanced breakpointing techniques. If I grab the live watch window in the header, you will see that I can leave it floating, or if I move it around, I could dock it to any of these windows. A docking button will pop up allowing you to dock to the bottom, to either side, to the top, or within that window. Let's take a look at do docking it within that window. By bringing it to the center button and letting go via the drag and drop mechanism, the left mouse button, the live watch window and the disassembly window now share a common window space. I can then utilize the tabs disassembly or live watch to navigate between the two different views. To undock the live watch window, I will click the live watch tab and simply drag and drop now that particular window where I wish for it to be. I'm going to redock it to the right side of the disassembly window. And then I'm going to resize the disassembly window such that I can see more of the live watch window. Let's start with traditional code and data breakpoints. We have a program here and in our program you will see many different functions. This is the main function of our program. As you can see the program counter in the interspersed disassembly and source window, the program counter arrow is actually in the main function. If I click in the assembly window you will see the green arrow. If I click in the source C source window you will see the perspective view uh, change to the C source window and you will see the program counter maintained at the first function that I am at where the program has entered the main function. There is a function button that will allow us to see the main functions associated include files and any functions that are within our program with a quick and easy view. Let's go back to the main function by clicking the main void function within the, this particular functionality. As you can see, it took me back to the main view uh, perspective. So let's go ahead and take a look at this program. As I mentioned, on our evaluation board, we have a potentiometer tied to the analog to digital converter on the STM32F429 microcontroller unit. We have a ADC variable in this particular program. If you would right click on that particular line of code, it will bring up a dialog box that will allow you to toggle a code breakpoint. In this example, I'm going to go ahead and right click on the line and select 
toggle breakpoint code. Now that we have a code breakpoint, we can start the program to run. As anticipated, the breakpoint is hit rather quickly, and you can see that in the breakpoints view characteristic. If we now right click on that breakpoint and edit it, we will get a dialog box that will allow us to create some very complex and conditions, uh, conditional expressions for this particular breakpoint. For this particular breakpoint, we have the ability to describe a condition. We have the ability to describe an action. These breakpoints are called hardware code breakpoints. I'm going to set up a condition for the ADC data breakpoint. The condition is going to be when the ADC data is greater than a thousand, the program is to break. So we will put in a syntactically valid C statement or C++ statement into the expression window. ADC data greater than 1000. And I will say OK. You will see the condition change in the breakpoint properties window. When the ADC data is greater than 1000 is true, the program will break. If we begin execution of the program, you will see that the program will continue to run at this point until the potentiometer on the board allows for the ADC data to be greater than 1000. But to track this in real time, I'm going to go ahead and add the ADC data variable into our expression uh, into our live watch window under variable expressions, ADC data. You can see that the, the uh, program is not running. As I hit go, the value of the ADC con converter is presented to the live watch window. As I tr turn the trim pot on the board, you will see the value of the ADC begin to change. Once the breakpoint condition becomes true, where the ADC is greater than 1000, you will see the breakpoint will trip and the condition will turn green and the program will halt. This is a code breakpoint with a expression utilizing an expression. Let's now get rid of the particular expression and let's choose a different type of method. This time we're going to use the condition true of skip count. We're going to use a very complex statement in saying if the ADC is greater than 1000, let's skip 10. So now we're going to change the value to ADC data greater than 1000. What you should see is that as long as this value is greater than 1000, it will skip running 10 times. If it is less than 1000, of course, the ADC, the program will run. So turning our trim pot back to zero and turning the and saying OK and beginning execution in the program, what you will see is that the method for the ADC data being greater than a thousand was initially in the register um, at a thousand ten. So it hit it on the addition, in, initial statement, but it does say that ADC data is true, skip 10 times that there are nine left. If I now take the trim pot and begin to trim up the value of ADC data to begin greater than a thousand, this condition will remain true at a thousand. The breakpoint will skip nine times and you can see seven, five. And once the condition is met, the breakpoint will break. So this is a very complex conditional breakpoint where we have a value of a thousand reading count on the ADC and if it's greater than a thousand skip that ten times otherwise run. Let's edit that code breakpoint once more and see if we can create yet a different type of an expression. This time we're going to add an action to evaluate another expression when the breakpoint triggers. So we're going to change the skip count back to zero we're going to leave the ADC data at one, uh, one th at greater than 1000, but this time we're going to add an expression. This expression action is going to be called level. And we're going to make the level equal to 500. 
We're going to return the potentiometer on the board back to a lower value below the thousand count. And we'll go ahead and leave the conditional expression of ADC greater than a thousand. But we'll also have the action of if the level is equal to 500 for us to break. And we're going to execute the program. As you can see, the ADC greater than a thousand is true. Execute level equals 500 is also true. So as in our program, we also need to add a live expression watch for level. So now when the ADC is greater than a thousand and the level is equal to 500, this program should break. And sure enough, when the condition became true, where the level was equal to 500 and the ADC data was greater than a thousand, the program broke. These are some of the advanced breakpoints that you could use when doing a code breakpoint. Let's go ahead and, and disable, uh, delete the code breakpoint such that I can show you another type of a breakpoint. This time I'm going to show you a data breakpoint. A data breakpoint will allow us to break the program when certain register accesses occur. It can be a read or a write. It can be a read only or a write only. We also can choose to match data in a particular mask location or trigger a range by which we want the break to occur. In this particular application, I'm going to choose access type write and I'm going to enable match data. I'm going to give a valid number of uh, a value for when I want the ADC data to uh, break. In this particular example, I'm going to change it to 0x64, which equals 100. Uh, x64. As you can see in the um, in the view, the value of x equals 64 being set when the ADC reaches a value of 100, this ADC data program will break. So now if we hit go and change the potentiometer, we will see the program halt when the ADC data value is equal to 100. And this may be a bit more tricky as this particular trim pot on this particular board is a little uh, cantankerous here. So we'll let it float about and I'll try to get a little bit more close here. There we go. Of course, when the ADC's value reached 100, the program broke because of the register write of, of 100 being true, of the data 0x64 being written into the ADC register. Now that you've seen the ability to add complex and conditional statements to traditional code and data breakpoints, let's take a look at yet another style breakpoint. This time we're going to take a look at a log breakpoint. I'm going to toggle right click, toggle log breakpoint and edit the breakpoint properties. Here you will see the CSPY, the CSPY message macro. The CSPY message macro underscore underscore message style allows us to pass a breakpoint message through a logging mechanism to a debug log window. We can also log a macro to a file, but that will not be covered in this particular video. So we're going to now pass the value of the ADC data variable through the CSPY message macro handler to the debug log by putting in the statement the value of the ADC is and we're going to say equal to close parentheses and pass via a comma the value of the ADC uh, variable data variable. In addition, we could also add a condition to this. We'll do this next. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. 
and run the program. What we should see coming out of the uh, debug log window is the CSPY message macro pointing its value of the ADC data variable to the debug log window. Now, as I turn the trim pot, you can see this value changing, both visually in the debug log window as well as in the live watch window. Again, this could be being logged to a file for data analysis and for further refinement of a program. Again, we won't show that in this particular video. Now I'm going to again halt this breakpoint and I'm going to edit this breakpoint yet once again. This time I can just highlight the breakpoints tab, right click in the breakpoint window and edit the breakpoint. This time I'm going to add a condition. Again, any syntactically valid C or C++ statement can be utilized in our expression windows. So we're going to use ADC data greater than 2000. This time, when the ADC data is greater than condi 2000 condition becomes true, the debug log window will, the CSPY message handler will pass the ADC data value out through our debug log window. If the condition is not true, the condition will not be passed out to our debug log window. This would allow us to set parameters of when we want to send readings of the A to D converter to a particular application or program in a more complex programming environment. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and run yet again. Now you can see there are no messages being printed out through the CSPY debug message, uh, macro. Instead, the eight, the, but the program is still running. Now, as I turn the trim pot, you'll see unless the value is of greater than 2000, these messages will not print. But once the value is greater than 2000, the messages begin coming out of the CSPY message macro handler to our debug log window. I'm going to let this run for a second so that you can observe as I turn the trim pot. Value is at 1346. The value is at 2000. Very complex capabilities in logging this message. I'm going to go ahead again and break this particular program. This time, let's change our cease by message macro to give us the val the val the level of the ADC. So in our program, we have another variable called level. So we're going to give it level, and we're going to say the, val the level is, and we're going to pass to that expression the level. Variable. Now, out of our CSPY message macro handler, we'll be able to see the level being printed out. Again, we could put some conditions around the level. So as we turn our trim pot, again, we'll see the value of the level being printed out. Very powerful. Another advanced debugging breakpoint is called a data log breakpoint. This time, not only will we log the data, we can also present it to our timeline debug visual interface. So we're going to right click on our variable and we're going to now toggle a data log breakpoint. We're going to take a look at it and on any read or write of ADC data, we're going to log that as a breakpoint. Now we're going to run our code. We're going to enable the timeline. We're going to allow to see the end of our timeline. And now in our data log window, you will see 
through the visualizer on our timeline that the ADC data variable is being presented to the visual data to the timeline data visualizer. As I move the trim pot, you will see the ADC data variable move back in time. This is a very powerful debugging mechanism. I can halt the program here and I can go back in time and look at what the value has been graphically over time. I can click into that window and I can utilizing the plus or minus keys zoom in or out my perspective. As you can see this could be the value of the ADC over any given period of time. From this metric here to this metric here we can measure how much time has passed. We can see that about four seconds has passed from the time window. Enabling this to run yet again and making it smaller so that you can see this real time, I'm going to change and vary the trim pot over time. And now data logging out to the timeline visualizer is our ADC data log. I'm going to now go to the level statement. I'm going to also data log out the level statement. Now there's one thing to be cautious about. The serial wire output is a limited bandwidth pipe. So it's a possibility that some of your data will be lost. Now that we're data logging the level, we can see red timelines coming out. This is to show you that our serial wire pipeline is starting to be overwhelmed with the amount of data that's being uh, presented therein. So now if we halt the debugger and we go back and look in time at this, you can see that the level was indeed coming out but with so much data being presented, the serial wire debugger was having um, the serial wire debug uh, was not able to keep up with all of the data packets, and each line represents when data was being thrown away. In conclusion, there are various other types of breakpoint mechanisms covered by the IAR CSPI debug drivers that this video did not address. Further information can be obtained by interacting with your IAR sales and FAE representatives, and also by reviewing the IAR Embedded Workbench CSPI Debugging Guide for any given architecture. Thank you for the opportunity to introduce you to IAR's Embedded Workbench Advanced Debugging Topic of Breakpoints.